Plop is an extremely interesting Pokemon that people really just don't see as a huge threat. Stat-wise, the only thing it's really got going for it is its base 100 attack and 115 defense. However, it has the unique ability called Anger Shell. This makes it so that at half HP or less, Cloth gets a plus one boost in attack and speed at the cost of minus one in defenses. We can pair this with Swords Dance to get an immediate plus three after living in attack, and Trailblaze can boost its speed even further. Once this thing's fully set up, Cloth is an absolute monster with Stab Stone Edge and coverage with high horsepower, and honestly this thing is just really fun to try to pull off. Ladies and gentlemen, it is crab time. Listen, Cloth is like one of my favorite Pokemon they introduced in this most recent generation, and I feel like he just does not get enough love, and really nobody uses this thing. But, I mean, it's actually, it's kind of good and it's really fun to use. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free. I promise you will not regret it. And look, imagine this. What if Raid Shadow Legends sponsored the video? You get to hear all about the awesome collection of over 800 unique champions, a super detailed and tactical RPG battle system, incredible graphics, an intense combination of PvE and PvP content. Well, lucky for you, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends to keep my full-time content creation dream alive, so let me tell you some more. The worlds of Raid Shadow Legends and Monster Hunter are colliding in an amazing limited time crossover. It's running from January 9th to March 5th, with players being able to collect five Monster Hunter themed legendary champions. Everyone will be able to get the Rathalos Blademaster legendary champion for free simply by logging into Raid for seven days between now and March 5th. Players can get the other four Monster Hunter themed champions via special in-game events, so definitely check in-game to see how to collect these sick champions. So don't wait, download Raid now using my link in the description, and start working toward the free Rathalos Blademaster Champion and join the hunt today. Also, the most exciting update to happen in Raid is the Cursed City. It has 100 stages to complete, including stages where you'll need to take down two of Raid's bosses at the same time. You can even get your hands on a mythical champion by working your way through the Cursed City and completing various quests. If you haven't started playing yet, now is literally the perfect time. Click my link in the description or scan my QR code on the screen to get insane bonuses available only via my link, and you'll immediately receive 500k in silver, energy, and chicken, and the epic Juliana champion after reaching level 15. She's a boss killer and attack type warrior, wielding the magic affinity, and she's extremely powerful versus enemies with affinity. Come find me under the name Hayden and join my clan, the King Booze, and we'll be legends together. So just hit my link in the description, and I'll see you guys on the battlefield. And let's get back into the video. So today our main goal is to try to get this cloth to destroy some people. Now it's easier said than done, but we're gonna give it our best shot. So my opponent here is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Rotom Wash. Now I figured this thing, it can't Volt Switch here. It's probably gonna go for like a trick or just directly for that Hydro Pump. And he's gonna just directly clean off my Swamper. We get a nice little spin cycle and that does a lot of damage. So they have Balls of Steel going for that turn one Hydro Pump. It connects and it does pay off for him. So I set up my Stealth Rock, which is going to be pretty nice for me here. However, I don't really have a lot that wants to take a Hydro Pump. And I'm like, you know what? If you want to try to roll the dice, go for it, buddy. They do. And they, in fact, do hit the two Hydro Pumps in a row. So buddy's either got to go ahead and get himself a Lotto Ticket or get the hell out of here. Because it's like I can never, ever hit Hydro Pumps. But it is what it is. Swampert goes down basically at the cost of just setting up my Stealth Rock here. And now I'm like, all right, I got to try to get something going here. So I'm going to go into the Indeedee. I got Croissant on my head, and we are ready to take an attack, but also fire off a nice little Expanding Force. Indeedee actually looks really good in this matchup, and Expanding Force hits pretty much everything really hard, other than uh, the Malamar, I suppose. But they decide to switch into the Gyarados. Now, these things are generally pretty bulky fellas. However, it's still not going to be able to take two Expanding Forces and I feel like not a lot of people understand that Ndidi is quick as hell. I do a huge chunk of damage with that expanding force there, and I'm thinking, okay, they probably switch into Malamar if they are going to switch here. However, they do just stay in, and the Dazzling Gleam takes care of it. So we basically are both down our water types, and I'm feeling pretty good about that because I did not want to be swept by a Gyarados today, and uh, that's good for Cloth in the long run. So now they get a free switch and they decide to go into that Malamar. Of course, I do have the coverage that I revealed with the Dazzling Gleam, and I know that I can probably take one attack from this thing, as uh, they decide to go for the Night Slash. They can't really superpower at this point yet. Uh, getting that Contrary boost it would be nice for them. However, they go for that Night Slash, and they get enough chip to where anything faster can kind of finish me off here, so I expect them to potentially make a switch of their own, knowing that I have to go for the non-stab Dazzling Gleam against the Malamar. Plus, I want to try to find some room to get the Cloth in here, so I decide to bring in young Roly Poly. I activate the Quark Drive, 
and we are rolling quick as hell. I get that speed boost as they do actually make a switch, which is really nice for me. And they decide to go into the Porygon Z, but he stole my nickname and I'm not having that type of activity out here. So this thing is, it's an interesting mon here where I can actually, I'm special attacking where I can go for a steel beam and do a whole bunch of damage, but I do half to myself. So I just decided to go for the earth power knowing that that's a two hit KO anyway. And I also know that an ice beam shouldn't likely take me out here. Plus, um, even if this thing was Scarf, I should outspeed because of that booster energy. And I'm feeling pretty safe out here. Now, they do have some big threats in the back that I'm definitely worried about. I just decide to stay in and go for that Earth Power as they do make the nice switch and just switch right into the Rotom Wash. So, this thing is bad for this matchup specifically because I don't have anything that can really hit it other than a Volt Switch. And then I have to waste my, my booster energy. I do decide just to go for that Volt Switch though. And I want to conserve the treads because... I can bring this thing back in later and get a huge steel beam off uh, as long as I'm still able to outspeed. Now, I have to figure out who wants to come in on a potential hydro pump and I decide, you know what, I'm just going to go right into Yan Mega and surely they don't hit another hydro pump, although, it did, and also they're definitely not clicking Thunderbolt here. So, they do actually go for that hydro pump and it straight up does connect and that is going to kill my Yan Mega. So, damn, this Rotom, I don't know what kind of eyesight Buddy's working with, but this thing is just seeing everything in 4k out here and just landing everything but with the open battlefield this actually leaves me a nice opportunity to go into the cloth here now this thing's hitting every single hydro pump and i feel like this thing can see the damn future at this point but rather than going for a trailblaze i'm gonna go ahead and click the swords dance i decide to roll the chance of them potentially missing the hydro pump giving me the free swords dance uh, and then i can trailblaze but they actually connect on another hydro pump i swear to god this might be the luckiest rotom i've ever seen um, but that's actually not all that bad because what that does is knocks me down to my focus sash uh, it also is going to activate the anger shell and as long as we have one hp baby the the cloth is alive and that is going to entirely mess with every single stat i have but most importantly it gives us an extra attack boost sitting us at plus three and we're also at plus one speed now we're in a spot where i can go for the trailblaze and that definitely knocks out the rotom and gives me a speed boost as well so Unfortunately, they decide to switch, and they're going to actually go into the fake-ass Entei with bananas on his head, and the Gouging Fire is a huge threat. It is going to be an air balloon uh, Gouging Fire here. I go for that Trailblaze, and while it doesn't do you know a whole lot to this thing, it does give me that extra speed boost and pops this thing's balloon to where now I could click the High Horsepower, but instead I decide to go for the Stone Edge because I don't want to touch this thing in case it went for the Burning Bulwark. But it do, I do connect on the Stone Edge, which is actually amazing, and that just takes care of the Gouging Fire. So that is one of the biggest threats out of the way. And now we have another huge threat directly in front of us, which is the Flutter Main. So the most important thing to note is this thing did not activate a booster energy with a speed boost, which means my cloth should actually be faster with the plus two boost than I am. I connect on a high horsepower, and I horseshoe crab the shit out of that dude, and down goes the, <laughs> the Flutter Main. Two of the biggest threats in the game cloth is just taken care of and we are feeling fantastic about that thing being gone so now they decide to go into the malamar i'm thinking the only thing that knocks me out here is probably like a sucker punch um, if it's not carrying the sucker punch however it is going to get his ass trailblazed and i figure at this point i don't have my psychic terrain up to block any priority but i go for that trailblaze um and they do not have the sucker punch it takes care of the malamar and squilliam fancy sun is going down and cloth is on an absolute tear the likes of which we've never seen before. But they can now bring back in this Rotom, and with some Stealth Rock chip, it's looking like a Trailblaze at plus three should likely just take care of this thing. Uh, and I am, again, faster than damn everything. These crab legs are underestimated as hell. A Trailblaze takes care uh, of the luckiest Rotom of all time. And uh, again, the cloth, all you gotta do is find an opening for this dude, and uh, it, can, it can make a difference in a match. And it's actually, its ability is super fun and very unique. So. Their final Pokemon is, of course, going to be the Porygon Z. And uh, sorry for this little ducky. I can go for that high horsepower. I do connect, once again, 95% accuracy moves basically mean 50%. But we connect, and down goes the Porygon. And Cloth is just... Call this thing the janitor, because we be sweeping out here. That was amazing and honestly kind of hilarious. So this thing is so much fun that I decided we're going to go for a second match here. So here we have a game against a pretty scary looking team. Now it looks like they have the Glamora as a lead. They also have the Hisuian Zorark to be afraid of. And in general, some yeah, pretty interesting Pokemon. So let's go ahead and jump into the match. 
So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Glamora. Now, a lot of the time, people try to bluff the lead whenever they have a Hisuian Zoroark. So I'm going to toss out the Swampert, who does have a good you know, matchup against the Glamora. However, I just want to see if this thing is actually going to be a ghost. But it turns out they go for that Stealth Rock there, which tells me this is, in fact, going to just be a regular-ass Glamora. Um, and I can just get a nice little Earthquake off here, where a lot of the time these things are Focus Sash. It does reveal that Sash there. So not only is it able to take a hit, but since I touch it with the physical move, of course, it does get up its Toxic Spikes with its Toxic Debris ability, um, which is kind of annoying. But honestly, this is the main reason why I do have the... Uh, rapid spinner in the form of the iron treads on my team which is very important especially for cloth who a lot of the time relies on its focus ash to get going so uh, i just decide to go for the flip turn here it does of course activate the second layer of toxic spikes but it finishes off that one final hp and that thing did not have any coverage against the swampert so i'm still relatively healthy with this thing i can tuck him in the old back pocket and at this point we have an empty battlefield now i decide to go into young roly-poly to do some rolling and spinning. I, I do want to ensure that I can get rid of both the Stealth Rock and the Toxic Spikes if I want Cloth to have any chance at his setup. Uh, so I come in here. Now the bad news about killing something with a pivot move like the Flip Turn is that they get to see, they literally just look, the fa look in the face of my Iron Treads and see that Quark Drive get activated and be like, okay, well, I can figure out a matchup here as they decide to bring in the Hitmon top. And uh, the only thing that this thing can really do is hit me with a Drain Punch for maximum damage, but I of course can outspeed, go for that rapid spin, it's going to get rid of all the hazards, and with the Glamora gone, we are in a great spot, as their answer is of course going to be that Drain Punch, which does a ton of damage, and uh, doesn't quite knock me out though, luckily. However, at this point, I know for sure a Mach Punch is coming, and one of the ways that I've ensured that priority is not a huge issue for this team is, of course, with the Indeedy. So I'm going to bring out the croissant like it's breakfast time, bitch. I can come in, activate that Psychic Surge, and that is going to be like, hey, actually, that priority you were thinking about, that's going to have to be a no for me, dog. So the Mach Punch, of course, uh, does not work in the Psychic Terrain. Our Magical Grape Juice just blocks these fists. Uh, and at this point, I'm actually pretty free to click Expanding Force. I have a great matchup against the Hitmonchan, who... Definitely does not want to stay in here, but also I can hit pretty much everything for some really solid damage. I, I still, I feel like this Pokemon is such a, a sleeper Pokemon just by itself even. But I go for the Expanding Force as it hits a Flygon and then it actually turns out to be the Hisuian Zorark. So that thing goes down. They don't have the double Focus Sash as that thing is not going to be able to take that. Um, except now they get a free switch into whatever they like. Now... They decide to go into Gardevoir, and then I'm thinking, hold on, this thing probably actually doesn't have much to hit me with. I can go for an Expanding Force just for my most damage. Um, as it turns out, they're going to go for the Hypnosis, and that's not something you often see on the Gardevoir. So it does actually connect. They get luck lucky on the accuracy roll there. Puts my ass to sleep, and then I'm like, damn, okay, I don't really feel that safe switching into anything here. So I'm just going to stay in and kind of see what this thing wants to do. Uh, and it turns out it's actually going to have the Dream Eater, and... First of all, I respect the set. It's not often you see a Dream Eater set. I've always wanted to try to mess around with it. It's just really not as reliable as you'd like it to be. But in the Psychic Terrain, it gets the boost in damage. And that does a lot, even as a not very effective hit against the Ndidi. And I do want to ensure that I can keep Ndidi around. That's because I want to make sure I can get that Psychic Terrain back up later. Uh, because of the fact that see, I, I need to block priority, especially with that Mach Punch Hitmonchan running around. So I decide to switch in the end Mega here. And at this point, I go for the Bug Buzz. It's not going to do very much damage here, but it does activate my Throat Spray, which gives me uh, a nice little plus one in special attack. As uh, sadly, with that Psychic Terrain up, a Psychic from the Gardevoir is actually going to be enough to knock out the Yan Mega. So we are not very bulky of a bug over here and we are going to go down to that so listen this Gardevoir is becoming quite the damn problem and I can't quite set up the cloth yet so I decided to just go into the Swampert I know that I should be able to take pretty much any attack from this thing and then knock it out at this range from an earthquake as they actually decide to go for a second hypnosis and I'm like oh damn is that that's what we're doing huh just the, ignoring the sleep claws well luckily they do miss the hypnosis which is deserved and I am able to knock it out with an earthquake so that's a little bit of a crisis averted there at that point, and I get a little bit of leftovers, and honestly, Swampert is in a pretty decent spot here. So, now they decide to go into the actual Flygon. This is not going to be the Zorark, but he is flying high as hell, and Flygon is a bit of a threat here, where I know that I can't really, I can't knock this thing out here because I don't have the Ice Punch, but I also know that I should be able to take one Earthquake, and... Uh, I do take it relatively nicely, allows me to fire off a flip turn, 
and I do a nice little chunk, you know, to the flygon there. So, this allows me to switch into whatever I like, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go into the iron treads. While I've used up my booster energy at this point, I can basically test to see if I outspeed, this thing is not Scarf, and I'm able to kill it with a steel beam. However, if it is Scarf, it's gonna outspeed me and knock me out. It turns out it is gonna be Choice Scarf, because that earthquake does take care of me, and down goes the iron treads. I had a, I have a few higher base speed points than Flygon ordinarily, so if it wasn't Scarf, uh, I would have outsped there. But I don't, and now I'm like, okay, shit, this thing is actually a bit of a problem here. It's actually a huge problem. I decide to go into Ndidi because I want to get that psychic terrain up. I have the terrain extender. It's going to stick around for eight turns. And while I know that this thing is going to knock me out with the earthquake, likely, um, I can at least have gotten that up and try to see as a last, last ditch effort if I can get the cloth going. So Ndidi goes down and I'm getting my ass beat the hell up by a flygon, but... One of my only answers here, or at least main answer, is going to be able to go into the cloth. So, this thing comes in mooing like a cow, and I know that I'm going to need a speed boost to be able to outspeed this thing. I also know that uh, it's going to knock me down to 1 HP here with that earthquake, and I decided to click the swords dance. So, they knock me to 1. Of course, that's going to activate my anger shell, which most importantly gives me our, you know, free attack and speed boost. And... You do not want to make the cloth angry out here. So I get that plus one speed. Now, of course, a choice Scarf Flygon is also at plus one speed and it's just higher base speed. So it should be able to outspeed me if it's just an ordinary uh, kind of jolly max speed Flygon. But I went for the Sword Stance just as a last ditch effort at basically at this point. And now I'm like, okay, I'm just going to click the Stone Edge. And as it turns out, this Flygon is not running full speed investment because I'm able to outspeed at just plus one. And I am incredibly confused. I don't know what the hell this Flygon is working with, but Cloth outspeeding there is like the most clutch thing ever. And it was kind of just my last ditch effort to try to turn this match around. And now, with that thing gone, we connected on a Stone Edge, luckily. It, but they bring in the the, uh, the Hitmonchan, who, of course, can go for the Mach Punch, but you cannot in the Psychic Terrain. And I feel like not a lot of people... Uh, respect the psychic terrain with that matter being at one hp i obviously block that and then i can fire off a high horsepower and at plus three attack that is definitely taking care of the hitmonchan and uh we have effectively turned this game around by the flygon being some type of like maybe it was like max hp by the way that flip turn did enough i don't know if that flip turn did enough or not I, overall i'm confused but they now go into the gyarados and i actually miss my stone edge which is wildly unfortunate but Cloth has effectively saved us this match, and that is because Gyarados is going to be their final Pokemon, and I should have enough answers to this thing, especially with the Reuniclus. So, I'm going to decide to go into the Jelly Belly here, and I know, of course, if this thing has the coverage with Crunch, uh, it should be able to, I should be able to take at least one attack, but then I can fire off a nice little expanding force and hopefully do uh, a lot of damage to this thing. Now, it turns out they're actually going to go for the Terra. And they've been kind of just keeping the Terra in the back pocket here. They're going to go into uh, fully just Terra Water. Now, the reason for that is mostly just because uh, maybe they expect I have something like the Thunderbolt. However, I feel like that's mostly fine. I can just go for this Expanding Force after taking a Crunch. Takes a bite out of my Jelly Belly. And while it does less than half, it gets the Defense Drop, which is an absolute dagger. Because even though I took that, that last one being able to look like I can live another one, Sadly, I am not going to be able to take it now with a defense drop. So, what I have to do now is switch into Swampert. And that's because, uh, obviously, another crunch just kills and outspeeds here. And I need the Reuniclus uh, as a win condition here. So, going into Swampert uh, is going to basically allow me to live a crunch with this thing. And now, the Gyarados kind of puts itself its back up against a wall with two options. Where, obviously, I know that he can't outspeed and kill the Reuniclus in the back. And he's going to need a Dragon Dance in order to do that. So they decide to commit the Dragon Dance. But luckily, since this thing Terrid into the Water type, I can actually click my Stab and Most Effective Earthquake. And that is going to be able to take care of the Gyarados. So I thought that this was kind of just like a weird and interesting match. And there was a kind of a lot of weird things that had to happen for it to end the way it did. But regardless, still super fun. Cloth came in relatively clutch and the Psychic Terrain got to block exactly what it needed to. And overall, super solid game. Also, don't forget to use my link in the description or the QR code to download Raid Shadow Legends to get some insane bonuses for new players. With an epic champion, it really does help out the channel.